Our focus on tonight's show is actually landscape design and a book about landscape design called Heaven is a Garden. And I'm so excited to welcome my guest, Jan Johnson, author of Heaven is a Garden and the upcoming The Spirit of Stone. Jan Johnson is a highly regarded landscape designer, author, and teacher with a passion for plants and beautiful gardens. In her book, Heaven is a Garden, Designing Serene Outdoor Spaces for Inspiration and Reflection, she draws on ancient traditions and modern trends to reveal the deep connection between the natural world and our emotions. An advocate for the transformational power of nature upon our well-being, which is so important right now, she is an award-winning instructor at the New York Botanical Garden and writes the popular blog, Serenity in the Garden. She is a co-principal of the design-build firm Johnson Landscape and Pools in Westchester County, New York, and her Facebook page is also Heaven is a Garden. She's a trained landscape architect and professional horticulture, and in professional horticulture, and she's worked in the pr- landscape profession in Japan, Hawaii, Kenya, among other places. For seven years, she taught in the landscape design program at Columbia, and now she speaks around the country, and I'm so excited to have her here with us tonight. Welcome to the show, Jan. Thank you so much, Joanne. I'm thrilled to be here. I'm so glad uh, that we we finally connected, and uh, I I just, I have to say I love the book, oh, and uh, I'm so glad that we get to talk about it, but also talk about, la- I'm going to pick your brain about landscape design and your wonderful uh, experience in the industry, so uh, I hope that's okay. We can try to cover as much as possible today. I would love to. I'd love to share ideas. Excellent. Um, you've such, as I've just read, and, and there was more to read, I know, um, you have such a history in the industry. Thinking back, can you remember what it was that led you down this path in, in landscape architecture? Oh, that's a great story. Um, I was um, I grew up in New York City, and my parents were artists, and I went to an art high school. You know, Ooh, the yeah. school. Mm-hmm. I went to an art high school, and I but I liked the built environment, so I thought, well, I'll become an architect because, of course, no one knew landscape architecture or landscape design because we lived in the city. Mm-hmm. I went to Japan as an intern in an architecture office during college days, and I walked through those Japanese gardens in Kyoto, Japan, which are legendary, ancient Japanese gardens. And the transformation that came over me when I was in those quiet, serene spaces was just breathtaking. And I thought, what is this? Mm -hmm. What I've never experienced this. And I went back to my architecture office, and I put the building I was designing into the earth, into the hill, and all I'd start doing was designing the walkways and the trees, and and my boss said to me, you're not an architect. He said this in Japanese. He said, you're a landscape architect. And I looked it up in my dictionary, my Japanese-English dictionary, and he sent me off to a landscape architecture office, and that was... That was it. That was history. That was it, yeah. Wow. What a what an adventure to go from New York City to Japan. Oh, yeah. It was quite quite a cultural shock, too. I mean, uh, first of all, women back, this is in the 70s, mm-hmm. early 70s, and women just didn't do these things, mm-hmm. you know? I, I know for the younger people, it's hard to understand. Yeah. And so to be a Westerner and a female in an office of all Japanese men was quite an experience. <laughs> Absolutely. And even to do landscape architecture, that would have been new for women. Oh, yeah. Or sorry, oh, yeah. just architect, regular architecture, Both. that would have been. Both, you know, yeah. Yeah. But um, I just didn't, I didn't think about that. I just knew that this is what I wanted to do. Right. And of course, uh, the my experiences in Japan, you know, had a momentous impact on me and I carry it with me to this day. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then you, so then you tend to change gears in your education? Yes, I did. And then from there, I went to the University of Hawaii to study landscape architecture. Wow. Again, such, so you just wanted to get away from the city. Yeah, that's true. (laughs) (laughs) I wanted to get away from the four walls of an apartment. Oh, yes, yes. And do you think the four seasons or were you looking for? Well, yeah, you know what it was, was that Japan, uh, Hawaii has a very strong Japanese influence, mm. and it also, 
back then was a great leader in um, outdoor living, and mm-hmm. so I just felt that the uh, what I would learn there was more advanced. Now, of course, we've all caught up. You mm-hmm. know, we, you know the outdoor living idea and the shelter magazines and everything have made uh, garden design and gardening, you know, so popular. Yeah. But My, back in the seventies, it was like rhododendrons, azaleas, and <laughs> junipers. I mean, really. It yeah, was yeah. Throw a, a wigilia in there somewhere, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Yeah, times have definitely changed as far as plant material goes. Yeah, for sure. But uh, but to, I think of you growing up in New York with, like you said, all the concrete jungle kind of thing, and then yeah. to, to go to the complete opposite in that serene, you know, stone-raked gardens of of the of Japan was... Yeah, it yeah. was seren- serendipity for sure. For sure, yeah. for sure. And I think it's wonderful that you've had the opportunity to do so much travel, you know, around that industry. Well, you know, the the funny thing is that once I graduated and I had, uh, you know, a degree and I knew how to do pretty drawings mm-hmm. from the landscape architecture classes, I realized I really didn't know anything about gardening, and um, which, you know, is the very dirty little secret of yes. landscape architecture. Mm-hmm. They don't know. Yeah. And so I, um, rather than work in an office, I went to work for a French gardener here in New York State at a resort hotel called Mohunk. Okay. And he had won the award for the best resort grounds in America the year before. Wow. And so I thought, well, this is the man I'd like to work for and learn from. Right. In terms of just how to do it with your hands Mm -hmm. in the dirt. But he didn't want to hire me because I was a young female. And again, back then, it was like, why why, why are you here? Right. What, What good are you? But, um... I prevailed, and because um, you're a tough New Yorker, <laughs> yeah, and I and I worked for him, and um, I I learned so much. You you know the French he was he came straight from the gardens of Versailles. Wow! And so he um, was he was a master gardener of the highest 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 order, and I learned everything from him. And the one interesting thing was he didn't use any chemicals, and this was in the 70s. Oh, my. When the chemicals were king. Yeah, know? for sure. He used fish emulsion. He used aged compost. I mean, it was really, he was quite amazing. Wow. It shows you how Europe is thinks different, has always thought a bit differently yes. about that, right, than, yes. than North America has. For sure. Wow. Well, that, So how long did you work there? I worked with him for about a year and a half. And, um, you know, through a whole, a whole year and then a little bit more. And, um, and then I went, and I believe it or not, at age 24, I went to teach college. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Which is kind of silly. Yeah. But, um, but that's what I did. So you never, so at this point, you still hadn't really worked, like, in the sense of... of An office or like pay, Yeah, get, you haven't gotten paid yet, really, for designs? Or did you kind of do that on the side? I did that on the side. Okay, I yes. I did that on the side, and... Um, um, and then after teaching at college for about six years or so, I went off and I got my graduate degree and then I worked in offices. Okay. And I did all that office stuff. Stuff. And, you know, <laughs> big jobs. Yes. All that good stuff. Only to discover, Joanne, at the end of this whole cycle, is that I really all I really want to do is create beautiful outdoor mm. spaces. And I wanted to recreate... Spaces. I wanted to create spaces that offered people the same feeling that I had when I walked through those Japanese gardens. Mm. I kind of went full circle, you well, know. I yeah. did everything that the professional world that they expect you to do, and then I said, okay, I've done it, now let me go do what I really want to do, yeah. you know, and to create outdoor spaces that feel good. Yeah, that feel good. Wow. And in between, before that, you you also said you wrote a book your first book. Oh, well, what happened was when I was in, you know, I, I'm kind of an inveterate book writer. Oh, okay. Yeah, and all my life, even when I was young. And so I wrote a book um, during college days on um, hydroponics, actually. Oh, really? I don't know if you know this, but, and um, my thesis for graduating from undergraduate was a, uh, how uh, rooftop gardening and how to do it but oh this again goodness. was in the early 70s yes and um 
So I wrote my whole book on um, rooftop gardening and hydroponics and soilless mixes and all this, these revolutionary ideas back then. Right. And it got published into a book called Gardening Without Soil. Wow. And, and is, it, um, is it still available now? Well, it's of course, it's way out of print, but it's still, you know, on Amazon, yeah. Gardening Without Soil. Yeah. And then I, years passed, and I went to work for a company at some point called Garden Way. Garden Way, Troy built road chillers, Garden Way um, carts and all. And I wrote a manual for them on solar greenhouse gardening. Oh, my goodness. Because I had installed solar greenhouses. Yeah. And, and then I wrote a book years and years later called Orthos All About Trees. And that book is, you can buy it for a penny on Amazon. <laughs> and it is a great book on trees. Yes. So I'm just telling everybody, it's out of print, but it's such a lovely book and very informative. And I was writing, telling the world all about these great different kinds of trees they could use. Oh, wow. Well, this is fascinating that you were just really cutting edge, like before, because now it's so, roof gardening is so I know. kind of the in thing. I know. It's kind of a kind of a sad, bittersweet feeling, mm, you know, because yeah. back then I went to the New York City Planning Commission to tell them we should do this and this is how we should do it mm -hmm. and it just I, there was no interest right. you know but you know, so a little ahead of my time <laughs> which, well, that, which, which maybe is the way I am with my uh, book Heaven is a Garden where I try to tell people how to tune in to the garden a little bit yeah yeah I think so because I think um yeah, and it, it's the finding the right people that have that mindset as far as their garden versus, right. you know, the people who are just, you know, low maintenance, you know, the first words out of their mouth, for me anyway, is they want something low maintenance. And Are you a designer, right? I am a designer, yeah. yeah so, I d so you know, I know, right, they want something that looks good year round, yep. right? Yep, four <laughs> seasons, low maintenance, and in budget, and their budget's usually <laughs> totally, totally not realistic, right? <laughs> Yes, yeah, but so you know what I tell them, Joanne, and I hope to share this with your audience, is that I say to people, it's all about the soil. Mm. And I say the old adage, which you probably know, you don't put a $10 plant in a $2 hole. You put a $2 plant in a $10 hole. Uh -huh. And I said, save your money. Don't buy the big fancy plants. Spend all that money on the soil. Wow. Get the compost. Get the topsoil. You know, get <clears throat> whatever else you can add to it. Mm -hmm. And I and it's my mantra to people. I said, if you have beautiful soil, you could throw a little tiny four-inch plug in there, and it will take off. Yeah. If you have lousy soil and you put a beautiful plant in there, it'll just sit there hanging on for years doing nothing. Wow. Yeah, that's true. And But people don't realize that there is, because they don't focus on that, the importance of the soil, which means, we now how do you feel about removing? So to me, I think you need to start, kind of remove some of the not-so-good soil, right? Oh, yeah. And then oh, yeah. add the better stuff back. Yeah. You know, it depends on where you live. And you For know, sure. But absolutely, or or abs or amend what you have, mm -hmm. which depends on your soil, of yes. course, right? Yeah. Or, or, but, and I tell people, it's not cheap, and I... I I explained to them right from before I even design anything. That's what I tell them. Wow. I said, I don't care if you go a whole year without a plant in the ground. I said, as long as we create the most beautiful plant bits. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, they don't want to hear that. No, but, for uh, sure. At least they're, you've educated them, and now they know they can't just buy a bag of peat moss and <laughs> throw a little peat moss in a hole, and there you go. You right. Know? Right. Now, do you do soil testing before you do the design, or do you just kind of, you should? I should, yeah. and most good, good, great gardeners do, and, but I'm being brutally honest. Sometimes I do when I'm nervous about the situation. Other times I know the soils around where I live so well. Mm -hmm. Like if I didn't, if I was working on a project that wasn't in my immediate, you know, tri-state area here, I probably would. Yeah, but you know the area. Yeah, once you start working in the area... Yeah. I, will, I will usually, I mean, I don't either, but I will ask people because there's different pockets. You know, we're pretty much clay, but yeah. then there there are those little pockets where it's, it is it is sandy. 
So, oh, um, really? yeah. And so people, they, homeowners usually know, you oh, know, yeah. and, uh, and then the new developments are really bad, right? Because the, <laughs> you know, All of the biggest houses have the worst soil. Yes, for sure. Right. And, yeah. the old, and when if somebody lives in an old farmhouse, I'm so happy because I know that the soil there is going to be great. Yes. Because the farmers pick the best land yeah you know? for sure and then it's amazing that it stays even though it's been developed right the yes. soil is still uh still still uh good yeah and you can tell because the plants it's true the plants really do uh do do better oh yeah i i did a i did a project just recently a few months ago and my my associate was with me and she thought you know it smelled like uh, uh like a manure pile and she was going yuck and i said you know this is from way back when they put the manure on the field. This yep. is an old, old property, you know, and you could still smell it. Wow, really? Yeah, it was great. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah, I can remember that growing up. You always knew, okay, who, who, uh, who's putting the manure on their garden? <laughs> right, <laughs> Right. Yeah. You know, now it's all composted, you know, in the bags and you don't really smell it. But back uh, then. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, that was definitely important. So I have to remember that. So, so yeah, but I'm I'm so much into the life of the soil and uh, and trying to uh, uh, illuminate, you know, the subject matter because I think this is where you have to begin. Right. I know we should talk design, 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 but it, you you can design all you want, but if you don't have a good substrata there, right, it's not going to. Look at look very good. Yeah, the plants won't thrive, right? Yeah. And there's nothing worse in a design. I'm sure you can agree where you know a third of the plants don't make it, oh. or right, and you're ha- constantly having to go oh. back, you know, and 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 rework things because you know. So. Yeah. And and so I'll tell I'll just warn people right at the beginning: you will pay money to create the plant bed before we put anything in the ground, and I and I tell them. Exactly what has to go into the plant bed. You know, I have a uh, str- strict directions on how. Oh, okay. What they should use. So, do you have a recipe that you that you that you apply when you are installing? Well, we definitely do. I like to use something called lobster compost, but that's just something here where I live. Right. So, any kind of composted material that's suitable for your area, plus, of course, the peat moss. Plus, I use uh, fish emulsion as a you water the plants in, and um, and quality topsoil. Okay. And lime. <laughs> the more I think about it, the more you know. I yeah. And then it depends. Sometimes I'll add other things depending on what we're planting. Okay. And I like I like compost teas. I love compost tea. Yes. You know to plant. So. Uh, so more yeah. natural fertilizers as opposed to doing. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I will use um I will use the um, roots. Do you know what that is? I'm sure you know yes. what that is. Yes. Yep. Uh, with the uh, micro. My, uh, yeah, micro. Yeah, it's hard to pronounce yeah. that, right? Mycorrhizer. Mycorrhizer, yeah. So. Um, do you? How much time do you spend? Like, are you involved in the planting quite a bit, or do you find? Yes. Well, I um I, I do. So we do very detailed plans right and and i shoot the elevations meaning that i set up a transit and i did, i figure out how high you know the, the differences in the hillside is mm-hmm. to determine how many steps or how high a wall it's not just guessing mm-hmm. and when it gets down to the actual implementation i will locate the plants okay i will cite the plants and I do tell the guys over and over, normally in my part of the world, that you have to talk Spanish, mm-hmm. by the way. I don't know yeah. where you are, but um, what to do and how to do it. Yeah. I'm very hands-on. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and sometimes you have to be because, um, you know, it's hard to, like I try to com- explain to the clients, like, yes, it looks this way and this is the way it should be on paper. And, you know, and it's pretty close, but yet when you have the plants in your hand and you're on, in, on site Sometimes you change things, it all around. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> things change, right? Like, I, you know. I explained to them, I said, it's just a guide. It's yes. Not, and some people treat it like the Bible, like, mm-hmm. right? And you say, no, 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 this is just the guide. Yes. Um, right. Yeah. Cause, and things change, and especially when you've done the, you know, design in February and the install in August, you know, you've changed oh, your mind, man. right? <laughs> Do you know that I run around right now, and I'm taking photos of people's properties. I can't 
even do the work yet. But I say to them, I have to take photos because the leaves are still on the trees. Yes. I say, once the leaves fall, forget it. Yep. Right? Yep. You, you can't even think of how to do something. It's, yeah. It always, yes, Joanne, I totally <laughs> commiserate with that. Yes. Yeah. Now, has your have you found your work evolve? You know, I mean, certainly... From where you started to now, it sounds like it has a bit. But do you kind of look back and go, oh, well, I can't believe I designed that. Like, do you, have you visited old past designs or do you yes. reflect on some of those? Yes. I think, uh, like in my book, I talk about simplicity. And that comes from the fact that as years, I've been in this profession for 45 years. Mm -hmm. So as the years have passed, I find that I get simpler and the lines get simpler and the planting plans get simpler and um, I I talk about that mm -hmm. about how sim a, a simple line drawing by Matisse can be just as powerful as a portrait by Rembrandt I oh, say wow you know because it's the simplicity the the powerful line is is really a very uh, compelling element in a design and you just and it shouldn't be take just one simple line yeah Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it's kind of near and dear to my heart this right now because I I had a client call me to kind of go back and look at their yard that I just, so I designed their backyard probably eight years ago, like when I was pretty new, yeah. you know, and then I did their front yard about five years ago. And they're, you know, they're finding the backyard for sure after eight years, right? The gardens it's are full growing, and it's, right. So they just wanted some advice. And I was like, really? I put those both in that garden? <laughs> really? I put all of that in that garden? And like, I'm looking back at the old design going, really? What was I thinking? You know? And, uh, and they were laughing and I'm like in my head thinking, wow, you've come, you know, good in a way. And like, I've come a long way. Right. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it was kind of surprising. I, well, you know, I'm, I'm hope that people listening to you say that they can all relate yes. you know when you just start out you just so f you want to throw everything but the kitchen sink into that plant bed you know yes well you have to have this oh and don't forget that mm -hmm. <laughs> yes and also plants like i think i've also um my plant palette has changed because the plants haven't proven themselves right i've yes. i started designing with all the new things that everybody was saying was great and then and then they weren't so great so yeah. you know now i'm kind of like so that i had to say so they had a few of those not so great plants and they're like these yeah these haven't really bloomed for us and i'm like yeah i had to take them all out of my garden too yeah. you know because they weren't blooming for me either and like i specifically like the endless summer hydrangeas oh now listen i think i just made that mistake yeah. i think I planted them in a garden up in north of me, Massachusetts, uh, and I'm already thinking, you know, they're not going to bloom. Yep. Yeah. Because the late frost, right? They're, they're, exactly. You know, they're... they're, um, they're the, but the leaves will bud out, but not the flower buds. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yep. So uh, so that has been one that's taken me a while to, you know, kind of I feel like I'm always apologizing to past clients for that. Well, one. I, I did the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, so, yeah. So we learned. So, we, you know, there's no garden. The gardens are never done. And that's th something that I think, you know, it's hard for for people to know, to realize. Right. Right. It's not like painting your walls and putting in the furniture. It's, yes. It's not. It's always. Static. Yeah. It's always a continuation yeah. for sure. Um. What made you decide to um, let's come back to Heaven as a Garden? So oh, you've, you've yes. transitioned oh, from a cool. few other books to now Heaven as a Garden. Well, what happened is my husband and I run our landscape design build firm, and we've run it for 35 years. I, I think this is the third. Let me think about that. Is that third? third? I think so. Okay. I'm not, I think so. And um, Johnson Landscapes and Pools. But um, about... Six or seven years ago, I looked. My son had gone off to college, and he went and from there. He graduated and went on his own. And I thought, you know, it's time for me to share what I've learned mm. with others. Wow! And um, I would get up every morning before work at 5 a.m. and I would sit and write. And it, it wasn't like I had a a detailed outline. I would just get every morning get up and I would say, okay, what am I writing about today? And I would start writing. And after about four years or so, or maybe three years, I had the semblance of this book that's called Heaven is a Garden. And um, I 
I sent around to various publishers, and St. Lynn's Press um, said, yes, they'd love to print it. And it's now in its second printing and might be going into its third printing. Wow, that's wonderful. But it was all this all this stuff that I developed over the decades mm-hmm. on that I hadn't read about in books or in magazines mm-hmm. that I absolutely used. Mm-hmm. It's my like little ideas that I had gleaned from ancient traditions or from my day to day work that I said, I have to share this with people. Mm-hmm. And so that's how this book this is a this is the passion project. This is a book from my heart. Wow. That I said, okay, th- now I've, I've done my duty, you know, I've shared <laughs> it with everyone. And it all started from, it, do you think it was a direct link to empty nest syndrome, or was that? <laughs> I think it was like I had time finally to look around and say, okay, you know, you got a few more years on this planet, but yeah. what are you going to, you know, what are you going to do with all the stuff you've learned so far? And um, I ha- like I said, it was kind of like I hadn't seen it written before, so I knew it was something that was valuable. Right. And um, I hope so anyway. Yeah, no, I think so too. Because it is, it's easy to find, I mean, I'm, I guess I'm biased because I'm here talking to you about it, yeah. but in a way, but it, as a designer, it's easy to find books on plants or new plant styles or new gardening techniques and things like that. But even even um but anything about landscape design and looking at a garden differently and approaching it differently yes. is hard to find because even I, the books we took we studied in school like they're still using those same books the you same know? books yeah i know the same books and when people start to say to me well you take the line out from the house and you make this grid pattern and you do this <laughs> and i'm thinking oh my goodness that's not uh that's not what uh it's all about right you know? right yeah, those are old techniques. Do you still draw by hand? Not at all. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> um, we changed over to AutoCAD, and it changed my life. Yes. No more erasing. <laughs> changed my life. Yeah. Do, you, do you do it by hand? I don't. I do Dynascape, so I use oh, Dynascape. So there you go. Right. Right. I was never an artist, so my hand drawings when I was in school, so I did a landscape design certificate at, at a university here in, near, in Toronto, um, kind of continuing ed when my kids were little, I went back to night school and did it that way. Wow, that's and great. yeah, and so, but I was never like artistic, so my drawings were so basic. So when I finally was was taught how to do it on the computer, I feel like oh, I finally look you know a bit more professional. <laughs> well, and and you know, people aren't paying you for your time spent you know making circles with the with the pencil. You know, they're paying you for your idea. Yes, for sure. And the quicker you can get those ideas down on paper, the better it is mm-hmm. for everybody. Yes. So, um, yeah, no, I love, I work with AutoCAD, but Dynascape, I hear, is wonderful. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it, it is. I've really enjoyed it. We have one email from uh, Andy Crown. He says hi and that he's a big fan of yours and oh. loves your advice. And he's from Cincinnati. Well, that's great. It's Ohio, yay. <laughs> yeah, I just came back from Ohio. Oh, did Ohio. you? Um, do you go back often? Well, my like I said, my mother was from Ohio, so um, I I go back there. You oh, know, okay. Family. Yes, family. Family pulls us back. Yeah. Um, and your son? Did he? So did he grow up uh, helping? Not at all. No, <laughs> he didn't help. He didn't help at all. Not at all. No, Could no interest. Less. Could he, care he, less. He went off to Los Angeles and is in the movie business. Is he really? That's so yes. funny. I have two that could care less, but I think the second one's going to come through eventually. He's just he just doesn't know it yet. <laughs> yeah, right. He doesn't. He hasn't. You know. I mean, the, you can't you can't make the kids. You know, you they got to follow their heart. That's they, right. They do what they want to do. So um, he, but he enjoys my uh, he enjoys my talk about things and showing him things. You know. Yeah. He's, and he listens. Yes. Know, he listens to it, it all. Yeah, I can't, I can't help but think that they do, do have a better appreciation for things. Oh, and he has to go to all these guards with me. So he's been <laughs> to, like, like Lotus Land. Like, when I go to visit him in, in California, yes. you have to make the pilgrimage, everyone, to Lotus Land. I don't know if people oh, know about that no, yet. Oh, no, no. Have you heard about it? I have not. This is in Santa Barbara, which is a little bit north of um, Los Angeles. And it was a very eccentric woman who started this large garden there 
a state garden. And this was in the 20s, I believe. Wow. And um, it's open to uh, the public, but here's, and it's really worthwhile, very worthwhile. The catch is this, which I didn't know. You have to make reservations to visit. Really? And if you don't make reservations, it, if you show up at their front gate, it doesn't matter. So I said to them, but you don't understand. I came here from New York. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm here from New York. And they said, sorry, you don't have reservations. You can't come in. Oh, my so goodness. If you go to Lotus Land, everyone make reservations. Make reservations. Oh, yeah. my goodness. I, so I had to go back. I came back a second time. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Because you but, knew if, if it was like that, then it was a place worth seeing, right? Oh, it's just, it is. It's definitely worth seeing. It's a lovely place. But, um, and and so um, Lotus Land has a very interesting, it has many different gardens, but one thing it had that my son was with me, it had a magnetic rock. Magnetite was in the rock. And I have pictures where you put your hand and paper clips on the rock, and the, and uh, they stick to it. And if you put your hand on the rock and the paper clips on your hand, the paper clips will st- stick to your hand. Wow! Because the magnetism goes right through your body into the to into the, the paper clips. Wow! And so uh, that is something that I talk about because if the rocks are magnetic and they're in this, you know, in the earth, then it affects us. Mm-hmm. And. Um, and that's something I talk about a little bit because that affects uh, the way we feel in a in a space. Yeah, absolutely. Nobody talks about geomagnetic <laughs> and its effect on us. You know. Yeah. I think the next century they probably will be much more aware of it, but not now. Yeah. Well, I think people are now spending so much. You know, the, some people money in their in their outdoor spaces that I think they can they have to look at. It's not just about function. You know, I, I'm getting personally a lot of you know they're focusing on the kitchen and they're focusing on the fire pit. I feel I I, I called a friend of mine earlier in the season and I'm like, why do I feel like I'm not a landscape designer? I'm a kitchen designer now, <laughs> right? You are. The kitchen, and and that's true. They'll spend. That's where the money goes. I know. Right? I but know. so here's what you do with the fire pit. Um, you. Know, the thing about fire, and I tell people that, the reason people want fire, frankly, when you're around fire, people naturally open up and mm. they talk more. Wow. It's kind of like sitting around the campfire and mm-hmm. then people start talking or singing, or, or singing, yeah. right? And, and so fire is a very uh, potent element. When my son was like 15 and he wouldn't talk, because 15-year-old boys don't talk, mm-hmm. and I wanted him to just open up, I would light candles at dinner. Oh, really? <laughs> I would light candles at the um, dining room table, which he thought was kind of cool, Mom, <laughs> right? And um, and it would always work to make him talk more. Oh, that's interesting. We'll have to try that with my 18-year-old that's still at home. <laughs> don't let him know. You know, yes. just light those candles at the dinner table. But the same thing with the fire pit. I think that's kind of why people want it. It's yeah. kind of like lets people zone out a little bit and yes. open up. Yeah, and I think and have a, a destination in the garden. Yeah, you know, because um, especially if they're not gardeners, you know, usually one maybe one one of the spouses, you know, is the one that looks after the garden. But th- together, they both want some place to go and sit and enjoy the the space. Yes. So, uh, so that seems to be, and and the kitchen part has been, you know, it's been a, quite a bit this this year, of uh, you know, of kind of positioning the kitchens. Well, with, and with <laughs> outdoor kitchens, you have to get into like inches. You yes. Know? Inches. I know. And Clearance that's, and overhangs and you know. Uh, and depends on the size of barbecue that they buy, and then it just you know, and it's, so yes, it's it's not you know the most creative use of our time, really. No. Um, but it's useful. I mean, yeah, I, it's true. People think it's a very romantic uh, profession, but if they realized how much you spend, how much time you spend figuring out the pitch of something for mm-hmm. you know positive drainage or or uh, like overhangs on kitchen counters or whatever, yeah, they'd be surprised. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, so talking, so as far as your book goes, you know, uh, why do some gardens make us feel so relaxed, do you think? Well, what I start off by saying is that there's three uh, elements of a serene outdoor space, and that is, like I mentioned before, simplicity, and then there's sanctuary, 
and then the last one is delight. And simplicity, as I mentioned, was just simply the effect of a simple plant bed line or the line of some steps, and to make them make a statement with them, you know, and make them make the line tell the story. So it shouldn't be frou-frou with, Mm -hmm. you know, matching this and that. And then the next one, sanctuary, is we all love to ha- feel somewhat sheltered. Mm-hmm. And I, and in the book I explain about the lure of the sheltered corner. Yes. Yep. We all love to have mm-hmm. our backs protected and to have a view in front of us. Mm-hmm. And, and that's so true. When you go to a restaurant, you, that's what you do, right? Yep. You, you scan the restaurant. You do site analysis of your restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> Right. And you never and want that table out in the middle, right? The floats. Right. Nobody wants yeah. it in the middle. Everybody wants your back protected with the view out to yeah. the window or whatever. Oh, I never thought about that applied to a restaurant, but you're right. It's true. It's yeah. the lure of the sheltered corner. And so when you're a designer such as yourself, you always create that special corner. It, the back backdrop could be a wall. It could be a hedge. It could be a big tree. Mm-hmm. It could be a hillside going up behind you. And you put the bench at the bottom of the hillside so your back is protected by the hill, and then you're looking out onto whatever. Yeah. Now, it doesn't have to be a big view. It could be a tiny little view. Mm-hmm. But whatever it is, that that's the most comfortable place to sit. Yeah. And then people go there, and they go, God, this feels so good, <laughs> you know? But they're not quite sure why. Yes, you know? yeah. Yeah, no, after reading the book, I, I've, it's helping me kind of almost, I'm going to have to trans, I'm planning on making some changes to my own yard because of that, because of some of the points that you've made. Oh, good. My, I'm so um, glad. Yeah, I'm a corner house with no real garden in the backyard, so all my garden's in the front yard, but it's busy, like the, you know, the, the neighbors and everybody's out there, you know, so I want to be able to sit and enjoy my space, but yet still kind of have that privacy and that ser- serenity. Yeah. So, uh, so you've given me, so it wasn't until reading your book that I realized I was lacking in it. And that's why I never really sat outside and enjoyed my garden. And then you've inspired me on ways I can help achieve that. So oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. So I, I really recommend, I hope our listeners are listening and, and know that uh, there's, you know, something in it for everyone as far as what you've written in the book. And uh, and I, I think it really is important to not just think about our gardens as low maintenance and and uh, budget friendly and all that stuff. But if we're spending you know money and effort on our outdoor spaces, that they should be, like you said, serene. Exactly. I mean, it, it costs just as much money for a bad design <laughs> as it does for <laughs> good design. So I always say. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Good point. Um, so so anyway, that's the three aspects. Yes. And, and delight. Oh, delight is the most personal one, and that's the one, like, if you just love the color yellow, why, why then you just keep planting yellow flowers and foliage because mm. that's delightful to you. Yeah, It's personal. It's whatever it gives you pleasure. Do you find people know what, what they find delightful? Like, do you think people ask you for that? They usually do. Okay. Like, but they don't know it. Like, you know, I'm sure you know this where people say, oh, I want... I, I love hydrangeas, and I love lilacs, and, and I go, okay, I got it. You like that whole voluptuous mm-hmm. hydrangeas, lilacs, roses, peonies. They go, oh, yes, that's why, I, you know, and then they don't even realize it, but that's what they respond to, that whole mm-hmm. sensual garden idea, you mm-hmm. know. Whereas um, with me, I like it more spare. I like stones. Yes. And, you know, sedums. And, but but it, it's whatever you respond to yeah Yeah, i think people may not think of it that way but Mm -hmm. they intuitively know what they like you know i find as a designer sometimes they over the phone they'll tell me that because those are the plants they know right they know the terms of hydrangea and lilacs and and roses but then i find when i visit their home like you know we start outside and look at their outdoor space and then when i go inside sometimes it's like, you know, I, th- I look around their inside space and think, okay, I don't think they want, they think they want an English garden, but I don't think they want an English garden, That's you know? That's fascinating. What, so do you tell them that? Yeah, usually. And then I find that once I start pointing things out to them, they realize that, that they, they certainly want flowers but and color, but they realize that, you know, when I start showing them pictures of what they're saying they want, and then I'm kind of looking at what they have 
you know, more more formal or more um, modern inside, I'm thinking, you know, I don't know that you really want that. Like, I think you say, this person would really like a bunch of ornamental grasses. They just don't know it. Exactly, right? exactly. They want clean, lo- cleaner lines in their thinking, and because they didn't know that that existed, right? They're thinking of the garden their mom or their grandmother had. Probably, you know, right. and. So, and they don't know that it's uh, available to them to have the ornamental grasses and the river rock and the, you know, the dry riverbed and, and, yeah, exactly. uh, you know, and once they realize that that also can be included and uh, can be a good space. So sometimes I, I always cu- try to say that when I try to differentiate myself um, from the contractors, you know, that go in and give like a quick napkin sketch on their front porch of their garden and, oh my God. you know, and I, and for free, you know, those quote unquote free designs. And I have to kind of, I constantly have to sell myself and sell the reason why you have to pay for a design initially. And I kind of use that example. It's like they never let the contractor in the house, right? <laughs> the best way to do it is to show them a before and an after photo. Mm, yep. I have found that you just say, well, here's what it looked like before, and here's what it looked like after. And then they go, whoa. Yeah. And then, seriously, even if it, and and that, like they say, a picture tells a thousand Mm. words. Yeah. And you say, the contractors, you know, it's kind of like asking the guy who's putting up the sheetrock how to design the room. I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah, 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 I I know. I have no... I have no patience anymore. You know, the older I get, the 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 least pa- less patience I have. Like, if you have to really try to sell somebody on it, they're probably not the person. Yes, they're, they're not that evolved. Yeah, that's know? right. It's time to walk away for sure. Yeah. For yeah. sure, I'm there. I mean, it's hard because yeah, you know, you want to. I just want to please everybody, and I want to. You know, but uh, yeah, it's it's time to start walking away from things and having and really appreciating the people who understand, right? Who get it exactly? Yeah, yeah. and the oh the aha! I, I was talking to someone today, and I set up an appointment for Thursday, and I explained how I work, and and she's like, "Yep, that's exactly what you know. That's exactly what I want. You know, I want a plan." And 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 like, oh, she gets it. You know, it's right. Why, and, and why is that the fewer? You know what I mean? Like that's the minority still. I find. In my neck of the woods, anyway. Well, uh, oh, yeah, no. I used to work in Vermont. That was crazy. Why I did that, I don't know. <laughs> but, um, I mean, Vermonters are the ultimate in uh, do-it-yourselfers. You oh, know? okay. But, anyway, yeah, I totally know what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, we have a, we, I would say, wouldn't you say, Gary, everybody around us likes to do it themselves. That's unfortunate. Yes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I'm fine with, if they want to do it themselves, that's fine. But at least start with a plan, you know. Um, and it's, it'll, in the long run, it will save you time, lots of time and lots of money and lots of effort. Um, well, and, and listen, if there are designers listening, the one thing I can say is that when they, when they, people ask you, you say, and they say, well, why does it cost this much? You know, it's your ideas. It's what you have in your head. Mm -hmm. It's not something you can go and go to Joe for, and he'll tell him the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's like. It's the Joanne Shaw design. I mean, and that's worth something. Yeah. You know, what what you have in your head all those years of staring at photos <laughs> and going to gardens, working yeah. people's yards, I mean, that all works. That, you know, yeah. is worth something, yeah. right? Yeah, for sure. And so, you, forty so 45 years, so you've been, yeah. where has been your, has Japan been your favorite place to garden or mm, to design? Let's see. Well, Hawaii was pretty great. I lived in New Orleans, and then, of course, I've got that whole New Orleans Southern uh, thing. And um, and then I lived, like I said, I lived in Vermont, which is one of the reasons why the publisher asked me to write my upcoming book, The Spirit of Stone. Okay. Because he said he noticed that I had a very strong affinity for stone, and mm-hmm. I guess that's you know, Japan is Japanese gardens and Hawaii with the lava rock mm-hmm. and Vermont with the granite. So I've used a lot of stone over the years, and um, and then I realized that every single um, plan that I've done, I had to first do the stone work before I added all the plant material wow and so then i and then when in my studies for writing my the book you know in japan they consider gardening really more the art of setting stone mm-hmm. than in plants yeah so uh i thought well you know 
they have a lot of books written about stone masonry, how mm-hmm. to build a stone wall, how to set a stone patio, but there wasn't too much on how to design with stone. No, absolutely. I, I don't know I've, if, if I've ever seen anything like it. And I'm yeah. so glad we can talk about that book. I wasn't sure if we could. Oh, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, I'm right in the middle of the final editing of it all. Excellent. And it comes out in? It comes out in February, although you can pre-order it right now. Okay. But yeah, The Spirit of Stone, Creative and Practical Ways uh, to Use Natural Stone in Your Garden. Wow. Which, of course, you know, I do address a little bit in, in mm-hmm. uh, Heaven is a Garden. You do, yes. Yeah, I call it uh, uh, Rock's Resonance, but um, I elaborate greatly on it. Because, again, I don't, I don't know, where you live, do you use a lot of stone? I do, yes, yeah, I do. Yeah, right, stone fire pits, right? Yeah, oh yeah, stone fire pits, and there's always stone, uh, there's always, you know, rocks in the garden somewhere. Yeah. And, uh, you know, sometimes they serve, you know, a function, and other times they're there. I mean, I just, I personally love, I can't imagine putting ornamental grasses in, into a garden and not having ornamental rocks, or, or rocks around them, you know? Right, it's such a, the, the, I call that the yin and the yang, yes. you know, the hard stone with the soft feathery grass. Yes. And, and that contrast is what makes it so compelling. Yeah, definitely. Whether it's a tall grass or a low, you know, Japanese blood grass. I mean, to me, it just makes, they both work so well together. Yep. So, and I, you know, after reading the book, your book, uh, The Spirit of the Stone, the, the, um, I realized that, that of all the plan, again, the plant books and the gardening books and the, and the how-to books that I've read, no one's ever told me about that, about putting where to put the stone and where to look at it. and, and to stand. Oh, you're going to love this book because I, I talk all about rock placement Yeah, and, and all the tips on that. And, uh, you know, I even talk about um, how when you're working with natural stone, you have to talk to the rock. <laughs> and I said, and the, the scary part is when they start talking back to you, <laughs> which they do. Yes, <laughs> and the real gardeners know what I'm talking yeah, about, you know? Yeah, for it's sure. Like, you got to talk to the rock. Oh, They'll say, sometimes I'll work with a rock, you know, like I'll work with big rocks with machines and setting big rocks in gardens. And sometimes the rock just won't want to go. We yeah. turn it, it doesn't. And I finally say to the machine operator, I say, he doesn't want to go there. Forget it. Mm-hmm. You know, he's just not happy. Yeah. And the guy's looking at me like I'm a little bit off. <laughs> but, um, and we don't use that rock. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah. Oh, I know. And even to go to when I've gone to, uh, to pick the rocks. You know, yeah, there's a whole the pile. They talk to you, right? They say, pick me, yeah, pick me. Yeah, absolutely. And and the go- contractor will be, st- or the homeowner, and everybody's looking at me, and I'm like, I don't know. Like, I just know that this, and I can picture where it's going to go, and which one mm-hmm. I want, and what color I want. Oh, and see? But no. nobody, but I've never been taught that. We certainly didn't learn that at school. No, of course not. Yeah, so. Yeah, but um, this, you're absolutely right on, Joanne. Yeah. It does. It, it's like, you just know. You, and they say, well, why that one and not this one? You go, I don't know. Yeah. That's the one. That's the one. Oh, well, we, I can't believe it has flown. I feel like we've been talking for five minutes, but look at the clock. Oh, Jan, thank you so much. Oh, Um, it's been so much fun. Oh, and so your upcoming book, uh, Spirit of the Stone, will be available in February, but people can uh, pre-order it now at Amazon.com. Dot com. Dot com. Yeah. Excellent. And your current, your past book is called Heaven is a Garden, Thank which they can so also much. order. Yes. And um, your website, do you want to give us your website okay, address? Okay, my website is yeah. called Serenity in the Garden, and it's on Blogspot. Okay. Serenity in the Garden. But I'm a real Facebook junkie. Like, that's how, you know, like I just added you as my friend. Oh, good. And um, that's my Facebook page is called Heaven is a Garden. Okay. So. And do you so do you post your blog post to that? Yes, and I everything do. is there. Okay, yes. excellent. Yes. Well, I will go home and friend and accept it and yes, <laughs> go from that. Yes. Oh, that's great. And I, and I, anytime you would like to talk to me, I'd, I'd love to. Yeah, definitely. I think I feel like we, we didn't. Re- we haven't even talked about plants. I mean, no, we, about we plants didn't really talk about plants and and a bit more design. So yeah, I definitely would love a part two with you because okay, I think great. you. I, I've done the show for almost two years. And you were the first landscape designer I've had on. Oh, really? Yes. I know. I try to get a little tips and tricks of, you know, if I can, depending on uh, 
on uh, you know who the guest is or what I'm if I'm just on my own and talking you know blabbing for an hour kind of thing but uh, to really with your experience and just your background all over the world I, I just think you're just uh, oh, a joy to talk to so I think we I would definitely love to do a second show with you and I would love it I'd love to talk tell your uh, your your listeners about the golden ratio and the and the golden Triang- rectangles, rectangles and how to use them in the garden. Oh, that would be wonderful. Yeah, so we'll I can't, see, I can't yeah. hear that enough for sure. Yeah. So that's wonderful. And so you're on Facebook and you're on Twitter. Yes, so I'm on Twitter. I'm on a um, overcommitted. <laughs> Aren't <laughs> we all over-sharing. with social media for sure, <laughs> for sure. Um, so I wanted to thank you again for, for joining us and for sending me this beautiful book. And I'm oh, so yes. glad that uh, we connected because I know you initiated, you connected with me. and uh, I, lo- I loved it. I loved Down the Garden Path. I oh. said, oh, I would like to get on this. Well, thank you very much. I, yeah. I really am enjoying doing it. And I think it's been great, the people I've met. And, and, uh, and I think it's a great topic to talk about, right? Oh, yes. So, absolutely. For sure. Oh. Okay, then. Okay, is there anything else you want to talk about or you want to mention? I know the exciting thing is your new book. and Oh, well, yeah. Um, I, would love, I would love just to uh, talk a little. I mean, I don't know how much more time we have, but uh, the one thing that I really am excited about these days is fall gardens. And I'm giving a talk on fall gardens um, in a few weeks here in, here in the States, in Massachusetts, at the Red Lion Inn. Okay. So if anybody's listening from the Stockbridge area, it's going to be me, Carrie Ann Mendez, and Karen Bussolini. Excellent. And we're putting together a whole fall garden symposium on October 20th. Wonderful. Well, that's great. Well, I hope we have listeners in that area. I'm sure that we do. Yeah. And they can check you out. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure they can learn more about it on your Facebook page as well. I'm, I'm putting it on there now. <laughs> yes, I am. Okay. Well, thank you again. And so we'll talk soon. Okay. Okay. Good night. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye.